so we finally made it to Dior. But we're not here to shop for clothes or purses. It's for a surprise. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, I'm Preston. And I'm Krista, and we're two people who love to travel, eat, and create memorable experiences. And in this video, we experience desserts made by... The Picasso of pastry. <laughs> <laughs> but before we begin our story, we gotta first talk about where it's located, which is the Gangnam neighborhood. In short, it's a neighborhood south of the river known for its luxury and extravagance. And you'll often find beautiful, architecturally luxurious boutiques lining a street that's called Upgujang Row, also equivalent to the Rodeo Drives or the Fifth Avenues or Champs Elysees of the world. What makes this row really memorable is that when you walk along it, you see individual boutique standalone buildings architected in its own style by the brands. You see brands like Louis Vuitton, any luxury brands you can see of, the building is completely different than the building next to it. It is watching a brand come to life right in front of your eyes. Yeah, you've never seen anything like that before. But as we're walking along Gangnam, we've been doing so for a couple hours at this point, we started to get a little peckish. So we were wondering what can we do A, to have a little break, but also get a little bit more energy and maybe satisfy a sweet tooth. And we remember that a couple years ago, we'd actually had French desserts somewhere around there so we sought to go and find that exact place it was honestly the only place we knew of because walking on fifth avenue is all retail we're like where's the food but we quickly remember this place and we just went right towards it so we walked past the pradas the gucci's the louis vuittons to the end of upkujong row to end up at dior apparently this location is the world's flagship dior boutique and in case you're wondering, no, we didn't come to Dior to buy wallets or purses or clothes. Although even I was so though, tempted to. <laughs> even though she was tempted to do it, even though she actually bought something from it years ago. <laughs> so you walk in, and as you walk in Dior, it looks like a regular Dior store. But don't stop there. We walked through to the end, past the beautiful Instagrammable staircase to your left. A mirror staircase where you can see your reflection. And then you end up at elevators which is crazy. You have to take the elevator to go up to the fifth floor. And as you come out of the elevator, you're welcomed with glistening white marble and mirrors on the ceilings. Very posh looking high-end cafe. It kind of gave me the sense like if I were to imagine walking into a kitchen or living room of a billionaire's mega mansion and you have that smell of coffee and pastries wafting through surrounded by luxury, that's, that's what, what this experience is. <laughs> We actually were feeling a little bit self-conscious when we arrived because everybody was dressed to the nines, impeccable fashion, and here you are in our bulky winter coats and our sweaty. backpacks, sweaty, wearing our sneakers, and <laughs> we felt like a fish out of water. <laughs> so we are on the fifth floor of the Dior house, and the reason why we're here is they have a really awesome cafe with amazing desserts, tea, and coffee. We ended up having to wait a couple of minutes because it was the winter time, so it was the smaller seating. When we went there a couple of years ago, we went in the fall, and they actually have a terrace that is open, so there's a lot more seating in the outside. But since it was only indoor setting, we ended up waiting about 10, 15 minutes to get a seat at a table. But our table got ready. We sat down, and we were offered an iPad that had the menu and you have selection of seasonal items, cakes, tea sets, different hot chocolates. There's an assortment of amazing French bakery goods and oh man, it was so hard to decide what we wanted to get, but we ended up choosing just something very small just to help us as a pick-me-up so we can continue on the rest of our day. And as you can imagine, no, it's not as cheap as a kaguksu at Hotok in our last episode. If you're eating at a Dior patisserie, you're gonna pay Dior prices. So these are ridiculous. They go from like 25 in the low end to over 100 to luxury tea sets. It's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling, but also well worth it because they're created by the Picasso pastry. Pierre Hermé, who has been called the meilleure pâtisserie du monde, or the world's best pastry chef, and he was awarded that in 2016 And as he well. did a bang up job. <laughs> so here we are enjoying our delicious dessert, and we forgot to mention that the table that we got happened to be right in smack in the middle of everything. So again, just trying to document it, trying to talk about the food. It's also, you can imagine, relatively quiet in there, and everyone's staring at us, let alone women, in their 
luxury branded clothing. We felt a little self-conscious and a little stressed out at times to just kind of be ourselves. It's a very posh atmosphere. Yeah, we did not belong. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what we got. This is the Saint Honoré, about $30, but it has cream pear, chocolate mousse, shoe cream, and a puff pastry, and a really exquisite black tea on the side, which name I'm not gonna butcher, with notes of raspberry, lychee, and rose. So I don't know how I'm gonna eat this. Here we go, here we go. Oh, it's hard. What's happening? Cheers. So the chocolate mousse is really nice and fluffy and creamy and milky. And the pastries are really nice to eat. It has a light flakiness. Very, very easy to chew. And I guess everything together is a very nice, subtle, sweetness soup of flavors with chocolate and pear and pastries together. Pretty good. <laughs> Like, it's not gonna fit. Really rich, exquisite melange of flavors. You have the sweetness from the poached pear, really creamy dark chocolate flavor in the cream, and the puff pastry is super flaky, but then the shoe pastry is nice and crunchy, so there's a really great blend of texture so you get to play with it in your mouth. Have some tea with it to help the creaminess go down. Oh, that's so lovely. I believe this is the Ispahone tea, and like Preston mentioned earlier, it's raspberry, lychee, and rose flavored. So even though we've been here before, it felt like, again, the first time being here, it's just such a, felt like a fish out of the water environment. We don't normally go to luxury environments like these, so it's always, uh, always an experience. So we decided to eat it relatively quickly for the reasons that we mentioned before. It was not the most comfortable eating environment. I think a lot of it, we just kind of gave ourselves a tough time in our heads. In our head. Don't get us wrong, it's truly a unique and fantastic experience. Everyone is super nice. And you can go with friends and family, you can have a shopping extravaganza, take a break at the cafe, go back down and shop some more if you want, or like us, just walk through the Dior store, take the elevator up and get some sweets. And it was a great thing. We did get some sweets to raise up our sugar level because we had quite a night in store later that evening. So in the next video, stay tuned as we check out Gangnam's Nightlife. And if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so you're notified when the next video comes out by clicking on the little notification bell. And if you enjoy learning about our favorite French pastries in Seoul, please give us a video a big thumbs up or if you have any other recommendations for great desserts in Seoul, Korea. Also share with us in the comments below as we'd love to hear about this too. Thank you so much again. Truly appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, Bye on Nara. Nara.